How do you think that the that the debate or the discussion about race and racism have uh, changed over time? Are things much more complicated than we ever thought they were? What, what's your take on, on the race debate? I'm not quite sure that we're having a debate. I think we're having a confrontation, but I don't think we've ever genuinely had a debate. America has never debated and had a forum, or in as many forums as necessary, to talk genuinely to the issue of race. Uh, black America, as well as the rest of America, uh, we really don't understand fully what happened in slavery. We don't have an in-depth understanding of all the nuances and the subtleties, the psychological impacts of experiences that molded who we are, that molded this nation, but molded specifically what the oppressor did and how the oppressed responded. What do you think the effect of President Obama's election has had on that debate? Is that a positive effect, a negative effect? I think we are shortchanged by the president on the issue of how we look at race. Uh, this does not mean to suggest that he doesn't have a lot of other issues on the table, but then you can't wish the issue of race away. That's the easiest thing in the world, is to become part of a colorblind movement. But until the issue of color becomes truly debated and resolved, there's always going to be a color issue. And this story can be replicated a thousand times. Issue, race. Issue, poverty. Issue, race and poverty combined to make an unholy alliance for what's going on to people. America prides itself on its compassion, but uh, it is an image, not a practice. There's a very popular story that's told among uh, political circles that uh, uh, back in the 1940s, late 30s, uh, Mrs. Eleanor Roosevelt, the president, uh, the wife of President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, had a very close relationship to the African American community. And one day she invited a man by the name of A. Philip Randolph to come meet with the president at a private dinner. He was the biggest and the most important black labor leader. And in talking to Roosevelt, Roosevelt asked him to be quite frank and open on the issue of America and what he was experiencing. And A. Philip Randolph took full advantage of what that was, and he pointed out the inequities and how the president was not using the platform as he thought the president could most effectively use it in some of these issues. And at the end, the president said, Roosevelt said, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Everything you said is right on the money. I agree completely. But I have one request of you to make that happen. And he, and he said, what is it? Go out and make me do it. What do you think is the relationship between the individual and the system, or where do we need to be working? That question catches me in a place where I am most challenged. The issue of segregation was about race. We fought that vigorously, and we changed oppressive laws. Those laws yielded uh, opportunity but those opportunities became somewhat minimal because just the law itself wasn't the only mechanism of responsibility towards the issues of race. There was a whole inbred social fabric that had for centuries been growing around racial issues. It was only a component, and all these other components exist. And that's what was so key to the civil rights movement and previous movements as well, is that people were in command of the agenda. And the more they pushed against uh, oppression and government, the more things were yielded to the people's voice. And that's what's seriously missing, very, very, very recklessly so, in America today, is a strong people's voice.